The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman on the very first day of July. Uh, happy July, and of course the happy July 4th everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful long weekend. So uh, a couple of things came across uh, my desk here. Uh, desks, I should say. Um, the first thing I'll deal with right away, and that is, could I show, do I mind showing the um, e-mini chart as I did yesterday? And a couple of people said thank you for some, uh, over the last couple of days, thank you for some really uh, interesting turns in the market that were shown live um, uh, in the charting. Well, of course, we don't know if that's going to happen, but we have made a peak E. Remember in the Chapman Wave methodology, we look for the lowest uh, low bar. We count the su each successively higher peak. We count alphabetize him, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. They mean, and they're really important on the way up. On the way down, they're important in a different way. It's the speed with which you, you get down to the troughs, troughs on the downside, peaks on the upside. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G are the letters we used. I never forget back in 2003, I think it was something like that. We had a dinner from Longwood, uh, Florida. I think it was Longwood. And... Um, uh, I had been talking about peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Tom O'Brien had always been talking about A to B equals C to D. He's always done that together with volume. And I was talking about uh, volume in a different way, on balance volume. Anyway, so I was talking about peak A, and you've got to really understand this because the idea of the Chapman wave is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode. And if at a, uh, usually going to a B or maybe uh it can happen in A, but usually it's a B, a leg B that goes to a peak B. Immediately after that is a chance that you can get an upgrade to a buy mode with the implication that there should be at least four higher peaks. Peak A, higher peak B, higher peak C, higher peak D. And remember, this is a floating letter. It's an A. It's called a leg A until it makes a peak. You get that reversal with a lower high bar becomes a peak. That becomes peak A, peak A, peak A until by one penny it takes, or quarter point if you're doing the futures, uh, it takes out the previous high. That starts new leg B, etc. All right. So that implication says if you get upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, you should go to at least a D, four high peaks. That's the obligation of the Chapman wave. So sometimes you can add D, other things can happen. We won't talk about that now. Uh, there's, there's a good chance I will be doing the hour, Larry Pesavento's hour. I'll do a little bit more of it during that hour. But I just wanted to get this across that D is where you start, you raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake to say, okay, what can happen here? Because other things can happen at peak D. Could you have a sharp major decline. Some of the major declines we've seen in the market are peak D, even in monthly charts. Uh, but most importantly, you could recycle within three bars on the Chapman Wave to a Chapman Wave instant restart. And that says you got an alternate count, but E is the next thing. And E, you still got to be a little bit careful. Well, what have we got? The reason why I'm taking time here is we got a D, and almost immediately we got the E. In the, in the one-minute E-mini chart, we had a D early. Uh, I, I've been doing the actually trading as well, but mostly following this uh, very closely. And here we are. Oh, is that not actually working? Well, I have to use my clicky mouse. Yep, the clicky mouse. There it goes. All right there. There's your D. Pulls back, starts another buy signal, goes to a buy mode, and goes to a D right there, uh, and then turns around four higher peaks. You've got to be careful. I used to call this in the beginning the seven wave form because that seven waves gets you to D. And then I, I decided since we can go E, F, and G and recycle, I'll just call it Chapman Wave Methodology with the, the buy signal to buy mode. And now what we've got is peak A, B, C, D, and it goes quickly to an E, and that was the high at uh, 38.16.75. And then we pull back. We're now above the 200 period moving average. I just wanted to get that out the way. It is in the 10 minute chart, a peak D, if I remember. Yep, there it is. It isn't a peak D until the bar is complete. So it's in leg D with a good chance that it does make a peak D in the 10 minute chart. I love to think of this as maybe the 120 minute chart, a day, daily chart, weekly chart, a monthly chart, the same overlapping time frames that are so important in my work. 
So, uh, here we go. All right, let's just get out of it. Now I want to go to the story that we want to look at. The Dow is now down 5, down 11. Uh, within that context, what I'm anticipating today is some kind of, you know, you talk about rebalancing in the sectors and the indexes, and they add some stocks, they take away some stock. We are seeing a rebalancing in a lot of fund managers' portfolios. We can see that. And You remember yesterday, I had this whole thing. I was showing you the difference in, in a double top. We were looking at IBM. Uh, we are, I should mention we are long IBM. And we've taken some nice little gains, but we are, we're all long. Um, and here it is at 139, pulling back today. And I said that vertical test from the 6th of June to um, just four days ago, right about the 27th, 28th. And I want you to show the differences between two, two uh, particular charts, also closer to highs than lows, having really much more positive patterns than uh, in many, many stocks. And I say many stocks, I'm probably going to say 70 to 80% of stocks. So the other one was DICOM Industries. And I want you to, we've been looking at it for subscribers, I've, I've shown it periodically, saying, why is an engineering construction maintenance and installation services firm doing so well? But that wasn't the point. The point was, I just wanted to show the vertical test of the reverse Y formation. What is that? That is, I look at three core patterns in the Chapman Wave methodology. I look at Straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. So you can see if, if, the, if the price in this particular case comes down sharply and then rallies and then fails at a peak A or a B and then takes out the left side low, you've got to be careful. I'm going to show a lot. I want to show this because it's the beginning of the month. There's a lot that you need to look at. We've got a Tiger a sale going on right now. If you sign up for my newsletter, you get for free. I mean, well, basically for you got 30 days trial. But at the same time, I include tons of webinars, maybe 10, 11 webinars. And in them, I'm discussing all these different patterns in great detail that I'm talking about right now. So what happens on the upside when you take out that left side high, the reverse Y pattern? Well, um, if you take that out decisively, you can keep going high. If you take the downside out, it's red because if you take that out, you can keep going down a lot more. So the reason why I wanted to show you this is <clears> – <throat> This pattern with the Y, reverse Y, says that DICOM, it doesn't have as good a chart pattern as IBM, but it is because of this left side, right side price test, it's showing some weakness that says it might have a harder time breaking to a, to a, a new recovery high, an all-time high in the 106s, and it's at 91 right now. Um, and that was really the point of showing that. And one of the reasons is, if I go to something like the GDX, if I go to something like the GDX, which is the gold miners, this pattern that I was talking about right here, look at this. I'm going to put this over here, and you'll see how many charts in the last, just this past week, have broken really important left side lows in this pattern. Here's the GDX. It's done it, it tested it, it broke under it. Within three sessions, it did close above it, but it couldn't. It made a little tiny dreaded H pattern here and went down to 27. I'll do many more when we return. Dow's down 163, SP is down 10, uh, 15. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. 
For all the details and to get your Tiger dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Just uh, real quick, we've got uh, GT sent uh, an email saying, New York Times, for Wall Street, this is a heading, for Wall Street, already dismal, gloom, dis uh, gloom deepens Wall Street, set records in the first uh, half of the year. Uh, none of them good. Uh, so I think it goes on with this long article. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, it's just, I mean, I don't have to tell anybody. So there's a pattern that I talk about, the lowercase m, uh, sorry, lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. In other words, this red arch formation doesn't take out the left side low. Instead, it makes another arch formation. It looks like a lowercase m. I love these things that I make. I, I, my technicals, invariably describe in detail the chapter eight instant restart tells you that we've begun something again the restart says we haven't quite made it we're still starting um uh, the uh chapter wave cup and ladle formation says that you made a cup formation and you took out that left side low it's actually this one right here and at a, a leg b or leg c you spiral above the left side high and that says you should go to at least a d and then come back and test the left side um, high so all of these are very descriptive the one that i've always had a little problem with because i treat it as fun but in, in the books you're not going to see it is when i call this the double hump you see this arch formation here in the magd the moving average convergence divergence and the second one well, if you look at the nine period differential, invariably it is it is illuminating, it is highlighting the pattern of the actual chart of the price that you're following. Occasionally, you'll get it going in a different direction. It doesn't happen often. Then what do you do? If a lot of people that use the MACD as a, a guide, if it starts to go down, they are negative. Well, sometimes the MACD goes down, down, down. And yet the price either holds steady or goes up. What do you do? Well, I have techniques. If you if you go if you sign up for my newsletter, not only do you get the information every day when I articulate the Dow chart and other charts to show you what we're looking at, um, but in fact um, all of these things are applicable. And look, this lowercase h going to an M is exactly the same as um, looking at a, a rally in the up to the upside pulls back and then goes, retests the previous high, and then pulls back and then retests it again. That's like a W, a soft W formation. All right, so these are all 
straight line, cup, arch, straight line, cup, arch, cup, arch, cup, arch. You can do that over and over and over. Or you get the chap where 40 acts, where you're making lower lower highs and much lower lows. And then what you do is, is you, if there's a break, a significant break above the downtrend line, you can have a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Well, this failed at this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. This is Tesla. That's what we're looking at. So te the reason why I brought this up is in the den, we have someone who says, short at ES. This is at 10.03 this morning. Perfect time, actually. Short at, short at ES. Amazon, Tesla, Meta, that's Facebook, Apple for swing trade. See you guys in September. So, so I, I always chuckle at things like that because it's like when you listen to someone and we're let's say Tesla's at 675 and they say 300 is my target. And I say, you know, you can have targets like that, but it has to get through 600. I mean, you're talking about 50% lower than what I'm talking about as just the key support level. Do one thing at a time. In the big picture in your mind, you can say, my thing is 300. But in a, in a, in a business like this, you, don't, you can't just name numbers like that because some people remember it becomes quite a serious thing, not realizing you could have a time frame of, of 10 years. You could have a time frame of three days. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, Hmm. Shorted ES, great timing. Look at this, shorted ES, right there. Um, that was at 10.03 and at 10.01, 10 uh, it had traded at the high of the day of 38.16.75 and here it is at 37.74. Wonderful timing. That's number one. Number two is so that person got in at about 3,800. Still fabulous. Um, Tesla. Now, he said swing trade. So I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm, I'm from, guess from the old school. I, I always say, I have an expression. When you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. So I learned a long time ago. I know this even in my intraday trading, as soon as I'm beginning to think, oh, man, no, whew, 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 was that great? Um, the, the, the market owls are sitting there wagging their fingers, sitting in your shoulders saying, ah, 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 don't do that, watch this. And then they just completely reverse everything that you think is going right. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, that's a little bit, that's a bold statement. See you guys in September. This is the beginning of July, August, September. It's two months, over two months. Anyway, the issue is that I happen to agree with him. I think that um, Amazon, I've been talking about this for a while, we'll get to that. But Tesla in particular, my thinking always is when a CEO like um, CRM, this is salesforce.com, starts to focus on other things, no matter how brilliant they've been, when they lose their primary focus and uh, um, um, whose name always uh, just gets away from Nyak, Nyak, Bezniak, Benioff, there, uh, Benioff. Uh, when he started to uh, build, he built the tallest, uh, the most uh, expensive building uh, in, in the area. I think what was it, uh, uh, um, Palo Alto? I think it was somewhere. They were in San Francisco. Anyway, I said, "Oh, be careful, be careful." But and in fact, the market, he, the, the price actually went higher. It went to three hundred eleven twenty-five in November twenty twenty-one. But then he was writing a book on all the the good things that he does and all that. And I thought, oh man, I, I I love the fact. But to 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 talk about it openly and just make this your big focus and to say that the whole firm is now focused on my book on all the aspects, I thought to myself, you know, I I love the idea and as generous and philanthropic philanthropic as he is, wonderful. But I think he's well. It's gone from 311 and right now it's at 166. I would say that that's a little bit of a problem. And I'm saying the same thing about Tesla with Musk. Now that Musk has turned himself into a political figure, now that Tesla is having, uh, I mean, everywhere I go, I mean, I used to, just for fun, I used to count the number of Teslas. And then I have this thing, I know I'll probably get into trouble for it. But I've always considered that, hmm, I don't even know, how to, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> just let's say, Tesla, there was a particular uh, um, aspect of Tesla that I looked at in great detail over the years, and that confirmed for me 
that there was a comfort factor now with Tesla and that, not Tesla, the car, just people that were driving Tesla, and that at a certain point, something will happen so that Tesla starts to lose its favorship. And I think that's happening with Musk. He became a political figure. He then went to, uh, he, he, he used to tweet away and now he's Twitter away. Um, I think he's lost his focus as he had before. He's still a genius in many ways. He's a genius of playing the market. He had been for the, for, I mean, the, the, it's, a, it's a joke, me even talking about the world's richest man. He doesn't, he could, t tomorrow he could turn around and say, you know, I'm done. Goodbye, everybody. I'm just going to sit back and, and, and spend all my money and I'll never be able to spend enough of it. Not the issue. This lowercase h pattern says at any point, if on a weekly chart, there is a close under 615, and followed within three weeks going under 600, I think that's, that's, that's got a real problem. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. So the application here is a kind of a fundamental routing, uh, just in my own background, the stuff that I've always looked at for decades, and I've applied it to Tesla. I have don't know, but on a purely technical basis, a close above 8.30 gives you the target of 8.36, the 200 period moving average. I think that's going to be really difficult to overcome in the shorter term. So my thinking is sideways with a chance of lower highs and lower lows. The competition in all the other uh, um, uh, areas of electric vehicles. And in fact, let me just show you this. BYDDF, I think, is the symbol. This is a Chinese. I've followed this for years. Uh, well, a couple of years. Um, this is BYD or BID company. 
Limited H shares. This is a Chinese electric company. Now, I think there's a big difference here because not only do they have Chinese sponsorship, they're, they're, you know, the country's sponsor, sponsorship, but everything I've read is they are really innovative. Uh, so electric vehicles, uh, they're trading at 40.25, had a high of 43.61. Uh, four sessions ago, it had an open, it opened at a round number 41, and that was on the 28th. I'm watching that because if it closes under 41, it's trading at 40.25 right now. For three out of four sessions, that makes 41 an incredibly difficult resistance to take out. And very important because if it does take it out, it could retest the 43.61 high. But in the weekly chart, I'm calling this a leg C, so it can take a little time to digest. In the monthly chart, a leg E. But if it does the cup formation, the left side, right side price time match says that it, in exactly the same amount of time from the left side high in the weekly of uh, 40, it's a little slow there, of uh, 40.24. On the, that was the week of uh, 26th of November, 2021, promised down to the 20, just over, just over 20, 20, 20, 21. And then it goes to the recent high of 43. On a closing basis, on a weekly basis, if two out of three weeks it closes underneath the previous high, that 40.24 uh, 40 high that I was talking about, uh, that's going to be a negative. So I'm watching a couple of things like that. This is a different electric. I don't know if I want to buy Chinese. You just never know what's going to happen. But this is a way better chart than any. If you look at Ford, yeah, they're going to be selling electric, but they, they're under terrible pressure right now. Look at this. Eiffel Tower, this is the same pattern we're talking about. The left side, right side price time match. It makes a low of uh, the week of the 20th of August. 2021 makes a low of 2038, spirals up to 35.87 high um, for week of the 14th of January 2022. I put in Eiffel Tower, looks like an uppercase A, comes plummeting back down, retests that left side low, takes it out, closes above it for two out of three bars. That's usually very good. No, it makes a dreaded H pattern and now it's trading down at 11.08. Um, so I, I, you know, I think there's there are definitely issues here that you cannot just say, hey, I think we're about to make major lows here. Everything's so over. So you've got to be very specific and you've got to have stops in. That's what we keep doing. We took nice profits in one of our positions, an extremely oversold um, um, ETF. And we got in, had really nice gains. I got I stopped out yesterday for what about a nine percent gain on it in just a short week and a week or so, um, and I I would like to get back in, but I said buy it under a certain level. If it doesn't get there, it doesn't get there. But I want to buy lows and treat them as trades. Um, a PG Basel it looks like biotech has best tone to it per technicals. Good sign for general market and risk on. So I wonder if I can find that now. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Okay. So um, let's go to the IBB, which is the NASDAQ biotech sector. It's holding okay. It's not bad. It, it, in fact, I would, even though this is a potential new brand new leg A, because it took out the left side low in the dreaded H pattern, look at this arch formation. Went to a peak D. How many Ds do we see? And plummets down. Um, uh, I think you're correct in saying that it's holding well. I also think you're correct in the daily chart saying the technicals are really not bad. With the technicals the way they are, price should actually be not at 117, but at 121.70 to 122.20 in that area. And it's not. And that says there is still pressure there. And they are, they are pressured. Remember, biotech is also pressured by um, higher rates. Now, if we are starting to pull back, oh, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm moving out here um, away from what I want to really talk about in this hour. The next hour, these are the things that I will talk about. So let me get, forget about rates for the moment. Let me just say it's holding very well. As a trade at 118, if you want, for instance, if it closes under 100 and, let's make it simple, if it closes under 115.50, I don't think I want any part of the IBB right now. If it actually by Thursday to Friday of next week, it even attempts to, to, to rally above 
120.42, that's the high of uh, 28th of June, and holds, actually it closes above that. I say, great, now you've got yourself a trading situation. Don't even say, oh, the 200 period moving average at 131, that's my target, forget about it. You just go step by step. Every day you have to deal. I, I do my analysis on the stocks that we have for my for my subscribers to my opening call. Every day we were changing our stocks and buy stops. It's a business. You want to have as much money. I want you. We've raised again the most amount of cash we've had in a long time. We had some positions. Like one or two didn't work. A couple worked out very nicely to take little bits off. And um, I, that's all we're doing here. But I do think that the Dow itself is one of the stronger indices. I'll talk about that in a moment. So, yes, Peaky, I like this. I like the action of IBB right now. And even on a day like this where the Dow's now being uh, up, down sharply, up sharply, now back down, down 253, S&P's down 27. I think it's also lack of buyers more than anything else that I'm looking at right now. But down is down. The, remember, price movement isn't based, it isn't. Just treat the price as the arbiter of the trend. Forget about all the technicals. If it's going up, the price is going up, that's important. And in this case, it's going down, and that's important. So the IBB is up 43 cents. That's important. And here it is in the weekly chart, just struggling to break above the 14 period moving average, which has, since it broke down after the 177.57 August high of last year, since it broke down the week of the 1st of October, with, with a high of 170 and a low of 155, that's it. It's touched the 14 period moving average because immediately it went pink, meaning the nine period went under the 14. And every single time it tried to rally, it went to peak A, failed. And this is another peak A. The other one actually made a B before it failed. Uh, that's a sign that said there's a little bit, a little bit more upside momentum uh, there, but a little bit only. So I say yes, IBB. Put it on your list as just a trading vehicle for now. Next question came that I didn't see is, uh, uh, Basil, what did you take on Disney? Oh, no, first of all, the trend gauge. Yes, uh, I don't have any trend gauge, uh, Chapman Wave trend gauge right now, Jamalaya. I, I do have uh, it from yesterday, and I forgot to mention it to my subscribers in my opening call when I showed the Dow chart. Um, every day I do an analysis and I discuss it in terms of Chapman Wave methodology. So it looks like this. I show you the daily with, oops, I show you the daily with the left side chart. There it is. The left side chart, the daily with uh, moving averages and notation. Then I show you the middle one, the same daily chart with the Chapman Wave automated resistance and, and support levels. If they show, this one shows up there. Um, and with on balance volume. The, the MACD and stochastic, and this one shows you the 120, which made a peak F top and a chub wave automated 31,891. A resistance, it went almost to that, went to 31,598, and then it came tumbling down. So, and then I'll give you a. a, a, a so, uh, yes, I did have it, and we've already had our 90 level point rally of more in the evening. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. A question from Duffy about, as I said, Basil, what is your take on Disney? Um, it also adds Tesla needs to restyle their cars. The Model S came out in 2012. If Disney, oh, then it goes on to say, if Disney revisits its March 2020 lows, we will have returned to 2014 values. So you remember the techniques that I have, these are applicable to any time frame at any point. And look, there's an arch formation. It is the dreaded edge because they make it even higher left side high, but it is an arch formation. And if you look at this, this has made a PE at 122.08 back in August of 2015. Disney plummeted down to the about 90-ish level. It goes peak A, peak B, peak C, D, makes a peak D right there uh, in November of 2018. Pulls back and holds this jump wave inside track propellant zone. Starts to bring you peak A, B, C, D, and it goes again to D, and it pulls back, and I didn't type in what that was. That was November. Uh, that was November of 2019 at 158.41, and it has a little tumble. It drops almost, what, 50% down to 79.30 in March of 2020. Screams up to A, B, C, D again. How many Ds can you get? 203.02, March 2021. Pulls back and goes trough A, trough B, leg C. You have to call this a leg. You have to wait for all of this month of July to say if it doesn't take out the two, oh, whoops, if it doesn't take out, I didn't type that in, the double bottom low of the 22nd of June of 92.01, and the next day was 92.07, so the 22nd of, of June was 92.01. Uh, if it doesn't go to 92 in all of July, then this will become a trough C. But if it goes even one penny below, the whole month, it's called leg C, and you have to wait for the next month, or August, before you can get a trough. So, okay. With that said, this particular pattern has gone to a 300% decline. I love the 300. It's not a Fibonacci number. I don't remember when or how or what, but I added it in here because I have the 200% and the 300%. I have the 100% uh, other than uh, the 1.68 or whatever it is that I have in the Fibonacci numbers. Most importantly, I love the 300%. It says you're probably getting to an outer band of oversold or overbought, for, depending on direction, and that within the next bar, watch to see that there isn't a move maybe a little bit over and then comes back and then closes less than the 300%. And that could give you a good clue to say some support is there. That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, nothing there that you find in any textbook. I don't know if anybody talks about 300%. I do. So in the weekly chart, nothing to see here except the on-bounds volume is becoming extremely oversold, but it's been there before in Disney. All I can say is that under the, the 
these conditions, when I was, I haven't looked at it for a while, so I'm picking it up here just arbitrarily, well, not arbitrarily for now, but arbitrarily because I haven't looked at it, is Six Flags Entertainment Corp. We've tried a number of times to, to, um, to, to we've bought and, and tried, given tight stops, we've tried to hold this saying, come on, I mean, in, in 2022, the summer of 22, is this not going to see huge, a huge increment, an increase in uh, activity? <laughs> Six Flags Entertainment Corps, theme parks? Obviously not. That's a big concern of mine. Put that together with semiconductors and a couple of other things. And it says, you know, what? the broader economic, the, the, the icons that I look at for clues to say, aha, uh, are saying, uh-oh. And this would be one of them. And to Disney, of course, I can't really talk about that in terms of entertainment because they are involved in so many other things that, you know, you, you've got, um, you've got, look at this, Disney, Six Flags is entertainment. This is outdoor, probably mostly outdoor activity. But Disney is a little different. They have movies, entertainment, theme parks. I mean, there's, there's the different, even the different services that they provide are divided up and big. So all I can say is I'm watching this real closely as probably a market summary as well. But right now it hasn't taken out that left side low. Uh, what did it say? 19.07 or something or 91.07. Um, yeah, I'm watching closely at 94.41. And that's just saying to me, this is telling us about the big picture. And that's the reason why I've said to subscribers, I, I'm, not, I'm not, even though we go long at different times in certain sectors and a, a smaller part of our portfolio. And now we've actually started to think of putting more of our portfolio to work. Um, the cash that we've got um, over the going into the summer, um, stocks that have held really well, like an IBM. We've still got to stop an IBM. I, you know what, what? What the heck? I'm not going to let the the IBM, you know, go from uh, 139 right now to 129 or 127 or whatever. I I'm, and sit there looking at it. No. We've got tight stops. It's either working or it's not working. We've got other stocks as well. So in the meantime, Disney's in the category that says, if there is a rally, it's going to be a news-related rally that just permeates the entire market. And until uh, Disney at a 94 right now is actually trading for an entire week and a half. I don't want just a one-week pop. I want a week and a half of upside material that I can really use as uh, um, technical fodder to look at the bigger picture, lower, ho lower highs and lower lows is the theme until it trades on a closing basis above 105. That's a big ask. That doesn't mean to say you couldn't get in earlier. I'm just saying in the bigger picture, I don't think that 103.81 is an nine period moving average in, in Disney. And since uh, October of last year, it's been pink and negative. I, I just, it's going to take a lot to get that positive, and it's going to be news that's related. Now I want to do something. I'll do this when I do um, Larry's Hour coming up next. I'll do more of the, uh, as I did yesterday, I did the grains. Um, and that is, uh, DBA is down again at 22. This is uh, really uh, from the high that was made at 23, 20, 23. Did I not type that in? Oh, I thought I had. That was an alternate count, F slash A, and it gave it back. 23.01 yes it just went a penny above a round number high so 23 and here is a 21 two points i mean that's a 10 11 percent uh, slide just uh, like that so i'm watching this and i'm just saying uh the overall uh look at the market says be very specific about your what you like look you know, someone asked me the other day about the slx i said i don't think the slx uh, is 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 in the ballpark right now of telling us that the economy is just great. It's not. It's made another trade today to into a peak E in a V-shaped pattern, the Eiffel Tower, up and down. Um, and here it is at 47. Uh, is it getting close to some kind of a buy signal? Well, here's the 161.8 expansion is at 47.90. It's at 47.80 right now in the weekly chart. There's the dreaded 8 went to, to peak A and then whoops, comes right back down. 70.43 was the high. These, these, are, these are serious things we're looking at. So it's on a trading basis. One of the reasons why we are still holding along the Dow and did not go short the Dow is because I believe that there's enough, there's enough buying pressure that if somehow we can hold 
support. Now it's, the support has to be a little bit lower down in the 30,000, say 400s. You could do that today. 30,400s 30, next week and can actually rally to the 31,150 level. Then we can see this rotation say, okay, now it's time for a lot of fund managers to say, let's put some money to work. That doesn't say they're right. I'm just saying that would be the thinking. Holding well would be the thinking. I'll be back in a moment for the final segment. And then I will be doing the hour, uh, Larry's hour. And, and I know that he is starting to improve a lot. That's a great thing. And I uh, will be looking forward to him. Are that you grinding excellent. in the market? But seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, uh, folks, we're back. And just <laughs> two things that I completely forgot about. One is that I didn't finish the story about Greg from Longwood and Tom, uh, Tom O'Brien said, Greg, still listens, Basil. Uh, great. Hi, Greg. We miss you around here. Um, so what happened was... I'm talking about the Chapman Wave, uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and I'm trying to drum this in. And it was after I had this major sell mode in Newmont, I think it was Newmont Mining. Or was, no, it wasn't, it was the South African, anyway. Um, anyway, I had a major top in the monthly chart at a D, and we had come down sharply, and I'm emphasizing Ds. And then I said, but of course you can also get an E. And I hear, and then types into the den. Greg types into the den. And he says, "Oh no! I finally got my A B C D." And he adds another letter. I'll never forget. That was I thought it was quite good. All right. So we're looking at the E mini as a technique that I use, where I I'll do a little bit more of this uh, when I do um, um, the hour of Larry's hour coming up. 
because I know people said to me, hey, that was that was fun. Can you repeat it again? So look what happens from the peak that was made at uh, 30, 381675 at uh, 1003. We pull back. And then what I like to do is I like to take a measurement from that either to the base. I'm very conservative in, in my first uh, pullback, and I took it to the 200 period moving average. And then I make a measured move, and then I took that measured move, and there again, I'm very conservative. I usually started off at whatever is the high of the arch formation that's the dreaded H, and then I pull it back. And look at this. When you go to the base of this candle right here, the low of that candle before it went sideways, that measured move takes you exactly to where we went to a low with two doji candles moments ago, about 10, 15 minutes ago, 37, 53, 75. Now what we've got is the potential for an arch from a cup formation, except taking too much time. I'll follow this up in the next hour. This is the E-mini uh, one-minute chart. You can do anything you want. You can do a to the camera. You can do I'm going to take this. So, any of your questions, subscribe to the channel.